Hello and welcome back to the Complete Day Trading Course by Wealthy Education. This is a video on how to choose the best chart time frames for day trading. So in front of you I have Pandora on the daily time frame. And the reason I do that is because I want to press upon you. And I'll even go to the weekly to, to show my point. I want to press upon you the fact that we are most certainly in a downtrend on the weekly chart. So what happens, unfortunately, is far too many day traders will look at this chart only in a 15. Now, in this case, it happens to line up quite nicely with the overall trend. But unfortunately, some of you out there may have chosen to look at Pandora during this time, you go, okay, well, it's starting to rally quite nicely. That's a good sign, right? Well, you can see what's happened. And that brings me to my point. Top-down trading, without a doubt, is probably one of the um, best things you can do to protect your account. So clearly, uh, let's see, over the last five years, Pandora has fallen from $40 to $8. Now, does that seem like a stock you want to buy? The answer, of course, is no. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people look at that and go, well, it's really cheap. How much further can it fall? Well, the answer is it can fall to zero, and, and some stocks do. Plus, you also have to keep in mind that uh, there's a certain threshold that a lot of funds won't touch, and some of them are $10. So there are large funds out there that won't be bothered with this stock. Beyond that, companies go bust all the time. And... Therefore, you can't buy something just because it looks cheap. There has to be a lot more to it than that. So with the time frame you're looking at, you, you really want to look at the weekly first and then the daily. And you can see that we've had a bit of a pop on the daily and it looked pretty good there for a minute. But it looks like it's starting to roll over. It's a little bit of support just below, you can see previously. So the question then becomes, is this previous resistance now going to act as support? It very well could. And then you want to zoom down to, you know, maybe the hourly chart. And you can see that the hourly chart shows you much the same thing. So what does this tell you? Number one, this tells you that even though the longer term trend is very negative, this is a market that is going to need to make a decision here. Clearly right here, there seems to be an area of support and resistance. As the trend is most certainly negative longer term, I'm much more comfortable shorting underneath that area. If it bounces, that's fine. It might be a short-term play. But if there's only one thing that I can press upon you in this course, it's going to be what I'm about to tell you right now that I think is by far the biggest decision factor that and money management as to whether or not you'll be successful. If this market bounces here, it very well could go to $10 again, and I'm the first to admit that. However, with the way this stock has behaved for five years, I'm much more comfortable shorting it because clearly something's very wrong. So let's go ahead and switch to um, Apple. Uh, you can see that on the weekly chart, shouldn't be much of a surprise. It's been in a nice uptrend. There have been times where it's fallen, and you could have made money from the short side. But you have to ask yourself the most obvious question. What's been easier to do, buy or sell Apple for the last 10 years? Well, obviously, it's been very easy to buy it. Some people have made an absolute ton of money, not only buying it, but holding it. But as a day trader, you need to recognize that this is an uptrend. You need to recognize that the weekly candlesticks are starting to show support here based upon these hammers right at about, say, 215 or so. So you take note of that. You can, for example, even put a horizontal line right in that neighborhood. And then you take that and you go to the daily and you can see that the daily clearly is uh, trying to respect that area as well. And then you can go to the hourly, for example. And then you get an even better close-up look. There's a nice hammer there from that level. It's bounced a couple times since then. It's gapped higher. That's a good sign as well. So again, what's going to be easier? 
Well, buying is going to be easier. So for a time frame, you can use the 15-minute chart or even the 5-minute chart. But you want to align your signal on this short-term chart with the longer-term analysis. In this case, the longer-term analysis is a buy single, a signal. Now, looking at this, there is an obvious area of resistance here at 220. There's an obvious and very negative candle right here. On the, this is a five hour or five minute chart. So could we drop down to 217.50 uh, 50 again? Yes, we most certainly could. However, there's a lot of demand there and you have to recognize that as shown from here. There were a lot of buying pressure here. The buyer stepped back in at that level and now we may be offering value. It's not to say that I can guarantee that buying here is going to make you money. There's no way to guarantee that. But the odds are there's going to be enough demand down there. Certainly favors a bounce over a breakdown. So the answer to the question, how to choose the best chart time frame for day trading is simple. You start high and you start to drill down. You want to see which way the market's been treating this stock for the last year, two years, whatever. The last several days, last several hours, you mark the most important parts on the chart and you attack it when it gets to that area. Otherwise, you're you're doing a lot of gambling. And you can see that clearly, even if we break through this gap, there's a ton of support underneath. So, unfortunately, a lot of short-term traders will see this gap being broken and think, okay, well, it's going to get filled, so I need to short it. When the reality is, it's just simply easier to wait till down here and buy. Remember, day trading is going to be about precision. And the only way you're going to get precise exits and entries is if you look at the big picture first.